Once you have your shadowcle, you only need about 10 minutes to install it. I'm Vinny, I'm the inventor of the shadowcle, and I'm gonna show you how it's done. When you open the box, you wanna remove the aim lines by pinching the insert and pulling them out. All the other contents are in the bottom of the box. The mounting template is designed to give you the precise location where you need to mount your aim lines. The distance from the bottom of the template to the top is the precise location where your aim lines need to be mounted. Take your aim lines, place them directly behind the mounting template so that the center of the logo is directly behind the top of the mounting template. You should be able to see the black lines both horizontally and vertically. The bottom of the template tells you exactly how to center it on the rim. Be sure to set your mounting template on top of the rim so that the notches center it perfectly. Use your sticky notes to be able to mount it in place temporarily. These will give you a temporary hold without leaving any adhesive on the backboard while you mount your aim lines. Once you've mounted your mounting template, you'll want to make sure that the top of it is parallel to the top of the white box. That will assure that you have it oriented properly. You'll notice that you can move the upper section up and down, and that's going to be necessary when it's time to press the aim lines into place. I like to cut the backing paper off the vinyl before I get up on a ladder, so I'm sure to be safe. Be sure you're very careful as you slide the logo into place behind the mounting bracket. Once you see the lines horizontally and vertically, you can press it into place. Remember, we cut off only a small amount of the backing paper. So now it's time to remove the rest as we press it into place. There's a squeegee that's included in your box. You'll want to use that as well when you're done to be able to remove the air bubbles. And yes, it is longer than you'll need it to be if you're installing it on a home hoop as I am. Once you have your aim lines in place, you won't need your mounting template any longer. Use the squeegee in the box to press out any air bubbles that there might be in your aim lines. This went on pretty well. The aim lines are made for a full size backboard. So cut them with a razor, a knife, or a pair of scissors if you're installing your shotacle on a backboard that is not full size. The question we get most often about installation is about why there are two holes in the mounting bracket. The reason why is because you could mount your shotacle on top of the backboard or on the back of the backboard. If you mount it on top of the backboard, you need to use the hole that is closest to the end of the mounting bracket. If you mount it on the back of the backboard, you need to use the other hole. It would be closer to the bottom in this orientation. Remember, if you mount your shotacle on top of the backboard, you need to use the hole at the end of the mounting bracket. This is not the preferred installation, but it might be necessary depending on the hoop system that you have. If you mount your shotacle on the back of the backboard, make sure that you are using the hole in the angle bracket that is closest to the back of the backboard. Today, I'll be mounting the aim rod on the back of the backboard. It'll be mounted flush on the back of the backboard and extended down. You could just as easily mount it on the bottom of the backboard and extend it upward if you have a system that prevents you from being able to mount it on top. The other option is to mount it on the top of the backboard. If you choose to do it that way, or if it's necessary, you need to make sure that the face of this mounting plate is gonna be flush with the face of the backboard. Do that, extend it down, and make sure that you're using the hole that's closest to the end of the mounting bracket. Now it's time to put the aim rod on the back of the backboard. To do this, we'll use dual lock. You press it together. You may have referred to this as plastic Velcro before. It works the exact same way, but it's a very strong bond. To mount your dual lock, you'll want to remove the backing paper. Firmly hold your mounting bracket, place it flush on the bottom, and press it into place. I'll hold it with a little bit of pressure, just to make sure that I have a good fastened piece of dual lock to the back of the mounting bracket. With the first piece of dual lock firmly pressed in place on the mounting bracket, I'm ready to put the second one on right now. I like to do this while I'm still on the ground because it's a little bit safer. I'll firmly press it into place so that I know it's fastened to the other one. And then, when I know it's firmly in place, I try and peel off the backing once again so that I could safely go up on the ladder ready to mount this. Now it's time to place the aim rod directly behind the aim lines. I'm going to extend it as far as I can and hold it directly behind the logo. 
you could measure it, but it's probably just as easy to have somebody else in front making sure you're directly behind the logo. If you don't get it in the exact location, don't panic. You'll have one piece of dual lock on the back of the backboard, and you can just press this one into place afterwards. Have somebody tell you when you're directly behind it and press it in. Are we directly behind? Press it firmly. We're all set. I'm going to extend it down and we're ready to play. Please be sure to click the link below to sign up for our email list so that you can be sure to stay informed about the release of more helpful videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching today and enjoy your shadical.